Hey, Viking fans, are the Los Angeles Chargers desperate? They're coming into Minneapolis, reeling. The Brandon Staley's fighting with the media. The Vikings are calm, cool, and collected. Let's talk about it next in three, two, one. <laughs> Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Skull World and on Instagram at MN Sports Podcast. Let's go. I'm ready to talk about Brandon Staley's freaking out on, on the media. It, this has nothing to do with the 27 to 0 comeback loss against the. Oh my gosh. He's just freaking out. He's nervous. Their team's nervous. They're flying to Minneapolis. They're missing one of their best players. Let's go. It's all the makings or of a Vikings turnaround. We got it. We're just over here. Let's take that guy, Risner, Reisner, whatever you want to call him. Is he, I could say it both ways. Let's pluck him out of free agency. Let's go over here and trade with the Rams. Let's make this team better. Let's move forward. Even if these guys don't play this week, we're taking the steps to improve. They're going, what the F's going on? We might fire our coach. Hey, do me a favor. And Hulk smash the YouTube algorithm by Hulk smash the like button. Let's go, let's go. I'm ready for you, man. And oh, do do this for me. Ring that bell. Hit subscribe. Go down then. Turn on the notifications. Make that. Do that. Ring the bell. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about the Chargers against the Vikings. And I got some stats for you. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to share some s- screen with you, show you a few stats, show you what's going on. I'm here for you, man. I'm here for you. I already recorded this video once, did not have my mic turned on. I'm an idiot. That's why I'm doing it again. Justin Herbert, let's talk about him. Completion percentage, 67.6. Yards, 534. TDs, three zero for INTs. What on the flip side do we have? With Kirk Cousins, we got completion percentage, 72.7 yards, 708 TD, six interceptions, one. And was that really an interception? I mean, defender in the Bucs game literally scooped around, scooped his right hand in. This hand's loose. Boom. Grabs the ball from KJ Osborne. Interception? Come on. Was that really an interception? He's on track for almost 6,000 yards, 50 I don't know how many touchdowns, 50 billion touchdowns. Let's go. Let's go Vikings. Kirk Cousins is having a hell of a year if we do one thing, and that is to stop these turnovers. We came to two, we came to this 0-2, like the Chargers, with, with completely different pass. They're 25 points a game or 22 and a half. They have zero turnovers. We have seven. We're giving up short fields. We're losing games. This isn't sustainable, just like 13 and four wasn't, uh, was kind of a aberration. Vikings seven turnovers is again an aberration. We're not going to have God knows Jesus, a um, hundred million uh, turnovers in the season. I don't know. Do the math for me. Put it in the, put it in the comments. What are we on track for, for turnovers? Anyways, the Vikings are looking good. Now, hey, considering Kirk is on his way to getting hit more times. Uh, more times than last year by 50%. We've only given up four sacks. That's 34 in the year. If you said, hey, we're only going to have 34 sacks and we're having a 34 an average year of giving up sacks, how is that? Well, we would take 34 sacks with this offensive line. Herbert's actually getting hit more or getting at least sacked more, and that's six. Uh, But, hey, the difference is uh, what's going on with these games is the defenses. You know, you might think the Vikings have had a piss poor defense, but they're giving up the devil's mark, 666 in the air. They have the worst pass defense in the league. The Vikings, 340. We game plan. That's why we gave up those yards uh, on the ground last week. We were still able to come back from it and almost win this game. But hey, just uh, you know, just the fumbles, man, the turnovers. I th- I feel like we're gonna have a similar game plan against the Chargers. I have no doubt this time we'll we'll uh, bring it back.
back. The defense giving up 211 yards to the Chargers on, on the ground. The Vikings inflated because of the last game. They had the ball 40% of the time. or for, Sorry, 40 minutes of the game compared to our 20. Vikings 332. This is going to come back to a normal number. I don't doubt it. The rush rushing. The, the Chargers, 294 yards on the ground, but only about a little under 70 last week because they don't have Austin Eckler, their best running back, their best player, I would say. The Vikings, 69 yards. We're bringing in a guy familiar with the scheme that's more like Dalvin Cook, but he, he's honestly tougher. And then he also got, well, they're, you know, Dalvin Cook is pretty tough too, but this guy likes, you know, he goes for contact. He's not the hugest dude, but he's quick. Cam Akers, if he might be able to play this week and give us a little bit of a spark, I'll do a different video on him some other time. But hey, looking good matchup wise against us, these guys had 70 yards. We got 69 on the year. But hey, the passing game is just so lopsided. Our, our passing game against their defense compared to their passing game against our defense, that is where they're going to be broken. And this is what I'm talking about. They're giving up 438 yards a game. We're giving up 336. You probably think our defense isn't playing well, but we're game planning. That's what happened at the Eagles. The Buccaneers game, we kept them, you know, really, we kept them down. It's just the turnovers. Again, it's always going to be the turnovers. Let's throw some stats up there, some team stats. You got uh, Herbert I just talked about. You got Kelly's not running too bad, but last week they were they didn't do much. They didn't do much at all. Eckler's out, 7.3 yards per carry, gone. All right, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, 187, 128. They're not explosive, 13.4, 10.7. It's more controlled game nowadays, but... Hey, not explosive, but two TDs. These guys are more like the Bucks than they are the Eagles, who had had some take the top off the ball uh, receivers. We not so much right now, age wise. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams are just really solid receivers. They and they're pretty efficient. Fourteen for nineteen, twelve for eighteen. Uh, I'm not even, you know sack wise. One a uh, has got two. Fox, um, yeah. Um, Khalil Max got zero, zero tackles for losses. Their pass rush is not getting on the quarterback right now. So we should feel pretty good about being if Bosa and I'll talk about him, um, in the injury report later, but Hey, looking good for us again, a matchup wise against these guys. And if they turn the ball over at all, they're done. We got Kirk cousins killing it. We already talked about that, but look at this 8.0 average. Mr. Charlie check down. It's always been a it's always been a perception that was just completely untrue. Guys averaging like seven and a half yards of his career, 8.0 average, killing it. It's again, quarterback rating 114, almost 20 points higher than last year. Madison, 3.3 yards is not cutting it. I thought he fought for every yard against the Buccaneers, had a rough game this last game. But hey, we're bringing in Austin Eckler for a little bit of a boost. He says he's on board with it. He is a team player. Shout out to Alexander Madison. Still a viable player on this team. We have all the faith in the world in him. Justin Jefferson, 15.4 yards. See what I'm talking about? Explosiveness, 15.4 yards. Addison, 19.0. We got the efficiency, too. 20 for 25, 7 for 11. Hawkinson, 15 for 17. This is the average brought down because the Bucks game is 4.4 yards per carry. K.J. Osborne, 6 for 12. Come on. 65 yards. He does have a touchdown. But who's the better player, Addison or KJ Osborne? Don't lie. Put in the comments. Who do you want at wide receiver two, KJ Osborne or Addison? And if you don't comment, I'm going to think you think I know who's listening, and I'm going to believe that you think it's uh, that that it's KJ Osborne. So you better go put <laughs> that you think wide receiver two, Addison. Put that in the comments, guys. Put it in the comments now where I think you, the other here we go. We got an injury report. Uh, Vikings, we got Garrett Bradbury did not practice, limited practice on Thursday. Marcus Davenport did not practice. When will we see this guy on the field? Did he get hurt in a walk around? Come on. Christian Derrissaw, limited practice. Come on. If this guy can start, check. 
game over. Jordan Hicks, limited practice. Guys playing good, man. We 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 took the right player this offseason. Sorry, Kendricks. Kendricks is on that, and we'll talk about him in a second. Josh Metellus, limited practice. Jalen Naylor, unfortunately, he's on the IR. But he can come back after four games. What a gunner, man. And he is our wide receiver, too, of the feature. K.J. Osborne will be probably too expensive after the season. He's going to get 10 or more million dollars a year. I don't think we want to pay that for a wide receiver three, so let's promote Jalen Naylor and who else ever we get. And we've been pretty good and pretty deep with wide receivers on this practice squad. Joey Bosa did not practice hamstring. Looks good for us, right? Austin Eckler did not practice. This dude's not playing. Danny Henley, uh, full practice. Eric Kendricks did not practice. There's not going to be a revenge game this week, it looks like, for now. Um, other guys that have injuries, uh, Mike Williams' ankle might hinder him. Let's look for it. He's not as doing as good as um, – as a Keenan Allen, Christopher Hinton did not practice. Injury part looks pretty good in our favor. Garrison's coming back. We're, Marcus Davenport hasn't played at all. Garrett Bradby's not a big, you know, a big upgrade from Schlotman. But, hey, I like him better as a field general in the, on the offensive line. So that, that's, let's talk, that's, that's all I got to say about that. All right, let me bring me back up. All right. We got. Uh, who's more desperate? AFC West, Raiders 1-1, one one, Chiefs 1-1, one one, Chargers 0-2, Broncos 0-0. Oh oh oh. We got the NFC North. Same situation. This is crazy. 1-1, one 1-1, one, one one, oh 0-2, Bears 0-2, oh Packers and Lions. Terrible losses last week, giving up the lead. Not closing. Here's, what, here's where it looks. Steelers at the Raiders. That's a tough game for the Raiders. They'll probably lose. Bears at the Chiefs. Chase all day. Broncos at the Dolphins. Dolphins all day. So it they're same situation here. When we got the Saints at the Packers, could go either way. Falcons at the Lions. Honestly, Falcons running game could go either way. Bears and Chiefs. Bears lose all day. Same situation who were, you know, kind of who were playing this week. So that's all the same. Where the difference is, is their desperation. Coach trying to keep his job. He's going to take chances. They can't lose. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They're going to, or even fourth and long, they're going to try a fake, you know, whatever. They're going to do desperation moves because that's who Brandon Staley is. He's not, he does not, he, he's not in the game moment type of coach. Kevin O'Connell has proven that he was last year with 11 and 0 and one score games, except for the playoff game. Uh, and then you got the uh, eight come from, from behind fourth quarter wins. He's in the moment. Our coach is in the moment. So that is a huge difference going into this game. They're desperate. We're acting calm, cool, collected, going, hey, I'll take a Risner. And I'm saying Risner because if you go look it up on how to pronounce it, it says Risner. And, <laughs> okay, it's Risner. I don't care. Anyways, and then we'll go over here and take Cam Akers, boast our running game. Uh, we're ready. Let's go. Skull Vikings. I'm ready for it. I hope you're ready for it. Cue the music. <laughs> 